Uh, if you think you want to work a couple of days from from home, let's talk about what support do you need. No, do we need to have better tools? Do we need to have better work from home setups? Do we need better product specifications? What else you need? for us to make that change so we are definitely more open towards having more flexibility both in working from office or also working hours right the working hours can also be non linear they can split their days to overlap with their colleagues and also overlap with some customers Welcome to the Universal Remote Webcast from GitLab where we tackle the real challenges ask the hard questions but of course try not to take ourselves too seriously. I'm Darren, head of remote at GitLab. I've worked my entire career remotely and with this webcast we want to share some of the best practices that we've learned at GitLab, but also bring in some really interesting people from around the world to share their perspectives. And today I have an amazing guest, Sunil, the co-founder and CEO at Cyaneasy. He and I go way back. We've worked together a long time and for historical context, we're recording this in April of 2020 in the midst of a global pandemic and Sunil, like many other leaders, has had to look to remote for business continuity and that has created new opportunities and new challenges and I wanted to invite him on the webcast to talk about some of those for other leaders and founders that are maybe going through something similar. Hopefully he can uh shed some light on that. So first off Sunil, thanks so much for joining me. Well, thanks Darren. Thanks for having us. So let's just dive right in. Was your team remote in any way prior to the COVID-19 pandemic? So before COVID-19, we actually had a distributor set up. You know, we have four um four locations, you know, one in Bangalore Ch- and Chandigarh in India, and then we have a HQ office in Dallas and we have a few people working in uh, Ukraine. So it was sort of a distributor set up, and of course it was remote friendly because there was a lot of interaction communication and collaboration between different teams in these different countries or cities got it so that's a quintessential hybrid remote environment where you have multiple headquarters and so even if everyone goes into the office the different locations are remote to each other did you actually have any employees that worked full time from home or did you support any kind of workplace flexibility where even if they had a seat in an office sometimes they would work outside of it sure um in terms of full time working remote i would say that's just me and that's because i am based in mexico city got it and right. other people like people in dallas um people in chandigarh in india and some people in bangalore they would have the option of working from home you know once or twice a week or whenever they feel there is a need for that and uh, of course we have a remote, another remote team in ukraine which does support for us that you know, they are working from their offices there. So that's it's very interesting you mentioned that because one of the things I advise people that are trying to transition to remote is to get the leadership team out of the office first. Yeah. The, the tighter the leadership team is tied to the office, it seems that it's more difficult for a company to adopt remote first practices and actually be amenable to remote and what I like to say is be remote fluent. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you said you are already remote and so that uh, inevitably helps your team adapt to um adapt to remote i'm curious yeah. if anything if anything changed uh after covid-19 i mean sure. did are people now fully work from home uh in their respective regions did you have to implement any new tools sure. or processes or orientations so sure. so let me just give a little bit of context on why i am remote full time for last couple of years right um so when the when the when the company when i was building the company and it was growing and our customers were expanding um it was like until 2017 i was in india along with my team but in 17 i decided to move back to us so i could focus more on building a sales uh, customer success and a partnership and bd operations here right so it was by a necessity that i had to go completely and i had to come back to us then for personal reasons i decided to um along with my family move to mexico city to stay here right so it was all based on a necessity it was not like a conscious leadership choice that you know leadership right. will go fully remote right but anyway you know the um, the situation made me figure out and put processes and frameworks so that i can work with my own direct reports which are essentially people at a leadership level and they are distributed in Dallas, Bangalore and Chandigarh 
So it kind of automatically happened that for me to be more productive and um, I guess efficient, I had to put together these processes. Um, but now with uh, everyone working from home uh, and it's, it's not remote friendly, it's more about remote first. Before we to, used to be hybrid remote, remote friendly, but now everybody is, uh, has adjusted and made those changes to work in a remote first, work from home uh, setup. This is interesting. Talk to me about some of the processes that you had in place. Because if you're in Mexico City and you have people in different continents, obviously there's going to be some massive time go zone gaps there. Yeah. It sounds to me like you're going to have to figure out how to work asynchronously. There's no yep. way you can get all of those people on synchronous calls day after day. So talk me through what that looked like before and how that has helped you now that your team is all remote. Yeah, so you know, a few years ago, we started um, basically very conscious efforts to put together a company guide, right? And the company guide essentially, or the handbook, let's say, it consists of you know, what are our, what are our um, communication styles and communication etiquette and communication principles? What are some of the core leadership principles and values that we want um, everybody in the company to strive for. And those are around essentially problem solving creatively, you know, uh, high quality, faster decision making. Also, how do we collaborate? How do we communicate, um, you know, let's say product specifications or design briefs or marketing briefs. Um, also standard operating procedures for how do we run our sales team? How do we run our success team? How do we run our support team? So all of that, started getting documented really well. And we would always make it part of our um, onboarding process, you know, both for new employees and also as a training process for existing employees so that um, they're not surprised or they're not at a loss if ever we become fully asynchronous or remote first, right? And those things have really helped in terms of, you know, when we made this adjustment, we had to make certain tweaks or we have to overemphasize on certain aspects like you know, more communication, more transparency, uh, more flexibility is needed. But overall it was um, not a big, big affair you know, for us to get adjusted to. Yeah, because you had things documented, the shift was not as jarring as it was to some is what I'm, is what I'm hearing. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've seen some companies that if there's no documentation in place, going from a co-located or even a hybrid remote environment into an all remote environment is very disorienting, very jarring because you're trying to accomplish several things at once. You're trying to keep your business going, establish stabilization and business continuity yep. while simultaneously writing and creating all of the process and documentation that you should have done from the beginning. Was your intentionality and the conscious decision on documenting that process, was that out of necessity because you are remote or was it something you thought this will help us work more efficiently or was it a combination of both? I would say it's primarily the latter, which is, you know, we would want, uh, you know, the company can only scale when it knows about um, how do we onboard new people faster, right? Whether we are hiring on, uh, you know, on the product side, design side, or support side, and different functions. So they all have different nuances to what those operating processes or procedures are like. And um, also for historical reasons, right? The company is close to 10 years old now, nine or 10 years old. So we need to be able to go back and check, hey, why did we make a certain decision? Why, why are we doing it like this? Is it the status quo just because somebody said it, or we tried many things and we arrived at this as the best best fit at this point, but now things have changed. A lot more people have joined, you know, we have more offices around the world. So maybe we need to change that. So it's just going, going back for reference really, really helps. It becomes a knowledge base internally you now that um, people can always refer back to. Is this something that you picked up in prior organizations? The thing that I'm trying to figure out is what makes someone naturally inquisitive and naturally uh, have a natural inclination to document because GitLab is very similar in that we're around nine or 10 years old and people that join the company now, we're at over 1200 people in more than 65 countries. We benefit from things that were written down from month one and month two. 
Hmm. But how do you have that foresight to think about it early on so that it allows you to scale, as you've said? I think one of this could be because of the way I process information. You know, I like to see things written down so you can, because when you're writing, then it shows that you have a clear thought process and it also creates more accountability, right? And somebody else can always look back and say, you know, okay, um, these are, this is how things should be done. Or this is what people agreed upon. So if there is some sort of a um, miscommunication or misunderstanding because of a, you know, either not, not everybody is a great communicator verbally. And also sometimes people forget things. You know, we do so many, you know, so many projects. We talk to so many people. So this helps. And I think this is you now myself and some of my co-leadership team who are also great communicators. Uh, we, we tend to rely on a lot more, you know, written forms of, you know, work-related communication than, than verbal. So it could be, I think that's probably the, the reason. Of course, the second reason is a few years ago when I, when I became remote, I had to figure out how do I asynchronously uh, get updates and you know, get, um, get, uh, make decisions and get more context. It's a key point to reiterate. Oftentimes I'll hear people say, writing things down, putting a focus on, a docu on documentation, it feels like it slows me down. It feels like it's less efficient. But my point back to them is writing things down makes you more efficient longer term because yep. you plug a lot of the knowledge leaks and the knowledge gaps that would inevitably pop up because people are human. And if we only verbalize things to each other and we don't have it documented in any way over time, you'll forget some of that. It makes it really difficult to loot people in midstream. It's really difficult for new hires to get fully up to speed because yep. it's just hand me down information, which inevitably erodes over time. Or you have to keep repeating, right? You have to again, get on a call and you know, Again, you have to remember what you discussed. You might have forgotten, but just handing over or forwarding a Google Doc or, a, or an email communication is very, very helpful. What's interesting about this is the things you're talking about would help a company regardless of their structure, whether you're an all remote company, a hybrid remote company, or even a co-located company. If you have meetings where you document things, even if you're all in the same room, you're gonna have less knowledge leaks going forward. And that's something that I've tried to share with people is we're talking about remote now a lot because tens of millions of people are suddenly remote, but a lot of these practices will help you no matter what stage your company is in. And speaking of that, I'm, I'm just curious if this has influenced your thoughts on workplace flexibility going forward in, in, in one way or the other. Is it the kind of thing that, hey, if we can make this work all remote, maybe we, don't send some of our team back to the office, or maybe we find out that we actually love having our, our teams in the office. Have you had time to sift through that? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a great question. So in fact, um, as the lockdowns are, um, are the lockdowns are being eased upon, right? In different cities and different countries right now. Um, since we have a big presence in Bangalore right now, close to you know, 40 people or so in one office, we, you know, we, you know, we spoke internally with some of my senior leadership team. And what we are realizing is that, you know, beyond the efficiency of documenting stuff and also having your, um, you know, different practice in the company around communication, decision making, and et cetera. I think there's another aspect that we see um, that we are benefiting from. And which is around, um, I think most of our colleagues or employees are much happier because they are gaining a lot, lot of their personal time back to themselves because you know, there is uh, less commute, there is less stress, there, is, uh, there are less distractions at work. And the second is you know, they feel more focused and productive because there are less distractions. You know, they can kind of box themselves in in certain hours of the day and just make progress on their um, immediate objectives or goals, right? And the third is, I think it has brought some sort of a um, urgency or importance to only work on things that really matter, either for the customers or for each other or for the company, right? So we are spending less energy and time on stuff that seem urgent, but not important, or that seem urgent, but they're still trivial. So how can you eliminate some of that stuff? So the point, the point that I want to get at is, um, 
uh, I think we are going to become more remote friendly, or at least give people the choice. You know, as as a leadership team, we will be will be more flexible. Now, if you think you want to work a couple of days from from home, let's talk about what support do you need. No, do we need to have better tools? Do we need to have better work from home setups? Do we need better um, you know better pro- product specifications? What else you need for us to make that change? So we are definitely more open towards you know having more flexibility both in working from office or also working hours. Right, the working hours can also be non-linear. They can split their days to overlap with their colleagues and also overlap with some customers, maybe customer time zones. It's heartening to hear that. It makes total sense for us, but for those leaders who have been resistant to remote, I really want to focus on what I'm hearing from you, which is you're creating an atmosphere and a culture that is supportive of doing things differently, of adopting a new way of working, of looking at the opportunity and not uh, not having a scarcity mindset. And one thing that I found uh, very interesting about what you just said is that your people are happier. They're finding themselves as more productive. They're enjoying that there's no commute. And this is during a really tough time. This is not an ideal time in the world. And what I'm trying to, to help people forecast is if you're appreciating the benefits of remote right now, imagine what it will be six, 12, 18 months from now when we, the travel restrictions are lifted, life returns to some degree of normalcy. Yep. And a lot of this infrastructure that you're building now is like fully in place and, and your team is more cohesive because of it. What advice would you give to other founders or team leaders that are in a similar situation? Maybe if they aren't quite as remote fluent or they're running into obstacles or they're just having this battle internally on should we do this or, or should we not? Is there any advice you would give on helping people to think about this as being an unblocker and asking people for feedback and asking people for what tools they need to thrive as opposed to let's just figure out a way to get back to the office as quickly as possible. Yeah, I think that's, you know, to be honest, that's a difficult question because uh, it also depends on the personality of um, personality or beliefs of um, either the leadership team or maybe the majority of the team, right? And sometimes it also depends upon the stage of the company. Now, some people just inherently believe if you're at a very, very early stage and you just need to, you know, creatively brainstorm, you need to, you know, you need to, things are basically moving, right? A lot of things are moving. So you, you don't want to be able to lose any sort of, you know, communication because of not being in the same space or same time zone. Um, so there are many angles to it, but I think I can come back from my personal perspective here. I feel that um, um, most likely, if somebody does not want to go fully remote, they can at least come into some sort of a hybrid remote environment, right? And when I say remote, it doesn't mean these people are in a different city or a different country. Does it mean, can we create more work from home flexibility? Right. You know. Um, can we even create, you know, you spend um, maybe four hours or six hours in the office, but the rest is up to you, you know, where you want to spend that time with, right? Because you want to avoid peak traffic times or you want to go and play something that, that you're really passionate about or you want to cater something towards your family that you really care about. So I think hybrid remote is something what I would encourage every founder or entrepreneur to at least give it a try. And of course, the team has to feel comfortable. Some people want to just, uh, they like the social interaction. So if you like the social interaction, it does not have to happen every day, but it can happen a few days a week maybe, right? So how much of that hybrid remote, um, that, you know, that boundary, I think that each team or each company should decide. Um, yeah, I think that's, you know, that will be my advice to the founders. The other one I would really say is, during these times, we have realized that a lot of our employees um, are, um, they have skill sets, so they're expressing more interest to contribute to other areas. Because they're able to get so much work done in, in a lesser amount of time, right. now they're figuring out how do I contribute more because I'm enjoying the work. Maybe I, maybe I write, maybe I write 
I like blogging about something or I like to, uh, you know, I like design. So can I help the marketing team with some design stuff, right? right. And in the age of Canva and, you know, and everybody can be a designer, right? And if you have creative ideas, we can help marketing with, you know, putting, coming up with some visual assets and so forth. So I think this is a great time for founders to, to encourage um, those hidden talents or unseen talents that you would want your employees to kind of sign in, right? So, yeah. And, and um, you know, it's a great time to figure out what's working in your culture and not working in your culture because you're not, you know, watching over shoulders of your employees anymore. So accountability, trust, and, um, you know, um, collaborative mindset, all of those things will come across. Either they're working good or not working. So you can work towards improving your culture, maybe. You know, this is a great opportunity to, to leverage. Love that, Sunil. We say never waste a crisis. We can't wish away the crisis. All we can do is determine how we're going to respond to it. It's, it's super inspirational. I hope tons of founders uh, and leaders watch this and, uh, and take your advice. Speaking of inspiration, I try to end each of these calls with one question. So I'll ask you, what is one good thing mm -hmm. that you've seen or heard this week or this month? Okay, so the, uh, actually we have seen a lot of good things over the last month. You know, unlike the macro climate where um, a lot of industries, a lot of employees are um, being impacted in a very negative manner, um, but because of the space we are in, which is you know online document signing, you know either from your mobile device or your web device, um, I think we you know we have seen you know tremendous um, uptick in usage of our product. And it's not just the usage, but it's about the use cases our customers are uh, using it for, right? We have, you know, one simple story, we just released a, a new feature on our product to, to help small businesses sign and fill these uh, PPP loan documents, right? That is under the SBS stimulus. Yeah. We released that uh, because you know, in, in 48 hours, we conceptualized the idea and we released it. And there weren't tremendous distraction from you know, small business owners because they are at home. They, are, they don't have access to a printer or a fax machine. But being able to quickly submit it, so sign the form using our product, right. and submit to the lender or their bank, and getting it approved, you know, we have seen like you know, thank you for doing this job. You know what we are doing, and you know, very very touching stories we have received. Um, and in fact, one story came from a customer in Dallas. Dallas at a headquarters. And we got a story from somebody in Dallas who, who just, you know, was extremely thrilled to have, um, to have the chance to uh, get his loan processed because Sinezy helped him submit the loan document faster. So I think, you know, plenty of stories like that, but that is something which was really touching for all of us. That's a wonderful story, Sunil. Where can, more, where can people learn more about you and Sinezy? So, they can check out our website, signeasy.com, or they can also go to a blog on signeasy.com slash blog, and they can um, you know, see what we're doing, how we're helping small businesses and our customers um, during this unprecedented and uncertain COVID times. And um, yeah, and follow, follow our journey over the last you know, eight, nine years. And if they, if they feel they need a tool like ours, I would... Um, you know, suggest them give it a try. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Sunil. It's good to see your face again. Thanks so much for joining me. And for the audience, we'll be sure to put all of those links in the show notes below. And if you have any questions for us, feel free to tweet us at GetLab. We'll try to work those into the next episode. Follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. And go to allremote.info to download the remote playbook, sign up for our newsletter, and learn more about how GetLab does remote. We'll talk to you next time. Until then, stay cozy, be excellent to one another. Aloha and mahalo.